Welcome to Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are joined today by two members of the San Diego City Council. They are Mark Kersey and Scott Sherman. Uh, they were both reelected to the City Council in June, and that is relevant in terms of our conversation today. We're talking about a measure on the San Diego City ballot, Measure K. And I want to take us back a bit, just give some context. Before 1989, the law was that for the primary, only voters in the district would vote, and then the top two would go to the general, and the entire city would vote. What's the law now, Mr. Kersey? Right now, if you get 50% plus one uh, majority in June, then you're done. And you've seen that with a number of city council races. You saw it with the mayor this year and his reelect. Right. And I think the idea is that if you have a solid enough majority in June, the voters have spoken, and that's good enough. And, and unfortunately, this would... This, this, but let's, talk, let's not say what it does yet, because okay. I want to go to Mr. Sherman and talk about his first campaign. <laughs> In 2012, Mr. Sherman was elected, and were you elected in June or in November? I was elected in June, and we got over that 50% threshold by, in the end, 54 votes. So it was 50.01 okay. or 02? Yeah, something like that, yeah. And so like you said, uh, Mr. Kersey, the notion goes that, hey, he got 50% plus one or 54, <laughs> good enough. That's right. Let me ask though about Measure K, because Measure K changes that formula. What would Measure K do, Mr. Sherman? And, and take the, my case back, right. back Please, in 2012. Go. Perfect. It would have taken myself and the next highest vote getter, and the two of us would have had to raise money all over again, right. campaign all over again, flood your mailboxes with more mailers all over again, and run all the way through and, and do this all over again in the November so election. So under K, it doesn't matter what the top voter, vote getter gets, the top two advance and go to the general. Exactly. Right. So with boards of supervisor races throughout the state, I think almost all 58 counties, the model is what we have today. If you get 50 plus one, you win in June. That's right. With open primary for state and Congress, the top two have to advance. Mm -hmm. And that's really kind of a constitutional issue. Mm -hmm. Give us a sense as to why, Mr. Kersey, you have significant problems with Measure K. Well, keep in mind that for the congressional and state legislative races that you just mentioned, as well as governor and, and the other constitutional right. offices, those are partisan races. Right. And so the idea is that You've got a partisan element there. City races, county races are nonpartisan. They are. And in fact, the one state nonpartisan office, which is the superintendent of public instruction, operates exactly the same way the city of San Diego does today. Oh, meaning, is that true? I didn't realize. If, if the state superintendent of public instruction gets 50% in June, he or she is done, right? I didn't realize So the that people who right. say we're moving to the state model, it's false. We're moving to the state model for partisan offices, meaning I guess they want, <laughs> they want the city of San Diego to be more partisan. <laughs> I, I don't think that's what, what our constituents want. So it's interesting because when we look at the genesis of this, and look, as we know, as a result of the progressive era, uh, all city offices are nonpartisan, all county offices are nonpartisan. But when this became an issue before the city council, what we saw is a city council that generally will vote in unison on most issues. It wound up being a 5-4 to get this on the ballot. Democrats versus Republicans, five Democrats, four Republicans. What they would argue is, and not just Democrats, but what the proponents would argue is that it is axiomatic that the June turnout is lower than the November turnout. Okay. And so we need to give the voters the ability, the most number of voters the ability to decide who their city council members are. So we got to take the strongest candidates from June and move them into November. I mean, look, it's undeniable. June turnout versus November, double, triple. Mm -hmm. What's your feeling about that, Mr. Sherman? Well, what we proposed in council in the chambers was, okay, then let's not have a primary and have that extra expense. Let's just move it all with all candidates to a November election and have mm -hmm. a plurality. Whoever gets a plurality wins. And I hear a lot of people talking about disenfranchisement of those who don't vote in June. But if you're going to take the top two vote getters and move them to November, what about all those people who didn't vote in June who had opportunities to vote for the other three or four candidates mm -hmm. that were on the ballot? Mm -hmm. Why not take them all, move them to November, that way everybody has the selection of everybody on the ballot, and take just a plurality. But and, that's not what they want. Right, and if you consider plurality, President Bill Clinton won twice with plurality, mm -hmm. not majority. Mm -hmm. 
George Bush, well, he didn't win a majority, <laughs> you know, in 2000, I'm not sure in 2004, Barack Obama. I mean, we have a history of electing people via plurality mm -hmm. and not via majority. Yep. So what happened there? You, you, uh, you gave us a bit of a sense. Give, give me your sense of that proposal, the plurality proposal for November only. Well, I mean, our argument was, why are we wasting taxpayer dollars having two elections? If the goal is just to have the most people vote, let's just move everything to November. Mm -hmm. Does anybody want more money in politics? I've never <laughs> met a single constituent who said, please, let's put more money into campaigns. And more mailers. And more, and mailers, more campaigns. More TV ads. No one's ever said this. Right. So the idea that you would do all of that in June and then force everybody to, to do it again in, in November is preposterous. I mean, I got 71% of the vote in June, right? I think that's a pretty healthy mandate. Not so, bad. so now I should have to go and do it again. What'd in you get? 50 plus one? Uh, this, got, this time around, I was a little over 60%. Okay, so you did well. Yes. Yeah. Um, Very safe. And that's really the point is right. why make everybody go through the expense, make all this extra money be pumped in, see the extra signs. I mean, we're right in the middle of campaign season now, and yes. I'm sure everybody's mailboxes are flooded. They're tired oh, of the radio yeah. commercials and the ads and everything else. That can be almost a year-long cycle if we go this route. I, I want to get a sense about the cost, not the cost of, of the money you have to raise because you have to run twice, but what about the cost to the city and or county mm -hmm. in having to have a second election? Do we know the numbers? Has it been penciled out? I mean, it's, you're talking tens, if not hundreds of thousands right. Dollars, of dollars, right? I mean, mm -hmm. per cycle. And, and, and multiply that over the next however many years. Right. And that you're talking about all those millions of dollars that could be spent on road repair, police services, I mean, anything else that our, our constituents want us to spend money on. And instead, we're going to spend it on an unnecessary second election, right? I mean, again, if you want to have more people vote, just move everything in November. So as you may know, the state passed a law a few years ago to move all measures to the November general election, mm -hmm. non-primary. I think San Diego has a companion measure like that as well, Measure L. Can we mm -hmm. hit on that briefly? Is that okay? Sure. I mean, talk, tell us what that does and how you think that plays kind of the KL marriage. Uh, other, th I think it gets more people out there to vote. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it, it, what I'm concerned about, and, and that's one of the things about moving it to November that's concerning mm -hmm. as well, and the only thing for me that's concerning is the amount of material that will be on that ballot. Right, yeah. Well, let's talk about it. I mean, this year, great point. This year in San Diego County, there will be president, Congress, assembly, Senate, city council races, county supervisor races, 17 state ballot measures throughout the county. You got measures A through N essentially. I mean, yep. what is that, 12, 13 measures? Yep. And then in various cities, you have community college, seven community college bonds, and I I'm exhausted. Right. Mm -hmm. Did you get your, ballot, your, your pamphlet yet? I got it just a couple of days ago. What is it, like 200 it's, pages yeah. from the state? Yeah. I mean, it's the size of a small phone book. Yeah. Literally. Well, yeah. and, and stand by if you live in the city because you'll be getting in print both Measure D and Measure C coming forward, right. the entire See, 100 pages each one of them. And that's, of course, them. dealing with the chargers. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so where do you go from here? Could you, let's just presume passage, who knows? Could you come back and float your own measure to try to resolve it in such a way so it's only a November election? Is that doable? I mean, can, can, is there a law in I mean, San Diego that allows that signatures to be gathered and put a measure on the ballot? Yeah, sure, absolutely. I mean, people have gathered signatures mm -hmm. before to get things put on, so how pension reform made it to right, the ballot four course. years ago. So th that is certainly a tool that's available. I mean, I, I prefer that the, the people vote no on K this time around, you. and then yeah. the council could take it up again. And, and if, again, the goal is to move it to November, let's just move it to November. And by the way, there are other options. There are, there's ranked choice voting, which they have in San in, Francisco and San Francisco and some other jurisdictions where people decide, okay, here's my first choice, here's my second choice. And it's, and it's an instant runoff situation, right? It's fascinating. So you combine June right. and November into one ballot. That makes more sense, too. Let's talk about it. If Kay doesn't survive, I'd love to have you back so we can see what happens next. Sure. sure. Okay, his name is Scott Sherman, council member. His name is Mark Kersey, also a council member, both in the beautiful city of San Diego. My name is Brad Pomerant. It's Local Edition.